Hey, welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for joining again today. My name is Olua Sheo, and in this Docker series, in today's video, we want to look at Docker Compose. Now, before now, we have looked at different aspects of Docker. We've looked at Docker Run, we've looked at Docker Create, uh, we've looked at different aspects, right, and the different options that you can pass in with your Docker commands and all of that. Now, today, we want to delve into Docker Compose. Now, in the previous video, we have looked at, you know, setting up a Node.js application that connects to a Mongo database, and we used the Mongo Express to connect to the MongoDB so that we can actually see what is going on inside of our database. Now, the Mongo, you know, the Node.js, rather, application that we have developed or deployed, actually, we connected it to the Mongo database, right, using the Docker run commands, which means we did Docker run for the Node.js application, we did Docker run for the Mongo database, we did Docker run also for the Mongo Express, okay? Now, also, in order for this Node.js application to connect to the Mongo database, we had to create a network that connects, you know, these applications together. Because as we have learned in the course of this class, when you are deploying a container and you want maybe one or more container to be able to communicate with themselves, you have to deploy them inside of the same network, right? It's just more like the, you know, the idea of when you have two systems and you want the two systems to be able to connect, right? You have to connect them, maybe using a cable or using a you know, wireless medium that basically makes the two system, you know, be on the same subnet or on the same network. That way they are able to share information and they're able to talk to one another. So in the case of Docker as well, we looked at the Docker network, we created a network, and then we deployed our Node.js application on that network. And the MongoDB also was deployed on the same network. And the Mongo Express was also deployed on the same network. And that allowed our application to be able to connect to the database. And also, you know, the Mongo Express was also able to connect to the Mongo database and we're able to use our application. Now, I have just described to you three different applications, right? Or three different containers that we want to run. Now, these containers previously, we ran them using Docker Run, right? But now we want to leverage Docker Compose because the importance of Docker Compose is that you are able to start up or add more than one container at the same time. And this container will also be able to share the same network. So instead of doing Docker Run for the Node.js application, Docker Run for MongoDB database, Docker Run for the Mongo Express or right container, we can just basically define all of this container inside of the, you know, Docker Compose file. And then we run the Docker Compose file and all the three containers will start up almost at the same time inside of the same network. And of course, they share the same, you know, configuration. And of course, they are able to communicate with one another. And that is exactly what we want to look at in today's video. So Docker Compose is what we want to look at. So if you look at the definition you have here, it says Docker Compose is a tool for defining and running multi-container applications. Like I said, we have a Node.js application, we have a MongoDB a container, we have a Mongo Express container that we want to run. So we can actually use a Docker Compose file to start up, you know, all those three containers at the same time without having to do Docker run for each, all right, of them. So let's take a look at how we can use Docker Compose to run this. Now, if you scroll down, you can all right see how Docker Compose works. So let's click on that to get an idea, all right, of how we can use Docker Compose. Now, Docker Compose is also written in YAML, okay? So which means you can create a simple YAML file and then define the containers that you want to run inside of the YAML file. Now here, it says with Docker Compose, you use a YAML configuration file, also known as a Compose file, to configure your application services. So inside of the Docker Compose file, your containers are actually defined as what? As services. Okay, so the Node.js application is going to be defined as a service. The MongoDB database is going to be defined as a service. And the Mongo Express will also be defined as a service. All right. So instead of saying you want to run a container, basically in Docker Compose file, you basically call them what? Services. Now, when you want to name your Docker Compose file, there are default names that you can actually use. For example, you can name your Docker Compose file 
or write compose.yaml. Okay, that's an option. So compose.yaml. So that's the name you can give it. Okay, and when you use names like this, what happens basically is that your Docker Compose file recognizes this particular name. And so because of that, you really don't have to, uh, you know, when you want to execute your Docker Compose command, you, re you really don't have to explicitly specify the name of the Compose file. So if you use Compose.yaml, your Docker Compose can actually pick up that name and then run the services you have defined in that name automatically. All right. Or if you use name like, for example, if you use something like this, docker i think compose at yaml your docker compose file is your docker compose command rather is also able to pick up all right that file automatically using the specified name and all right create all the containers that you specified as a service now it does not mean if you name your docker compose file for example if you name it let's say node or yaml for example it doesn't mean Docker Compose cannot pick up the file. It only means that you have to explicitly specify that this is my Docker Compose file by using an option called I think F. All right, to specify that this is a Docker Compose file that I want to run. And then Docker Compose will read that file. And then if the file, all right, is written and it follows the Docker Compose syntax, then it's going to deploy all the containers, all right, for you. So if you scroll down, we'll see an example. So now here is an example of Docker Compose file. Now, the previous Docker Compose file that you have will usually have what you call a version. So sometimes you see a Docker Compose file with version 3.8, 3. Point something and all of that. But the new Docker Compose file as you know, the version tag or label, right, has actually been deprecated. So when you are starting a Docker Compose file, you're starting with just services. So you define the services and then the name, the logical name, all right, of the service. So for example, now in this example, this front end is actually the logical name of this particular service. So this logical name is actually going to be start, is going to be run using this particular image. All right. So this is the image that we want to run as a container. Okay. And then here you specify the port of that application. If there's any network you want the application to connect to, you specify the networks, all right, as well, and then some other information. So for backend, so backend can be your database, and then this is the image of the database that you want to run as a container. And of course, you are creating in a volume map, all right, so that, I mean, we've talked about volumes already, so that even if you delete a container, the volume can still be retained. And then if you create another container tomorrow, you can actually map, you know, the already existing volume to the new container, and then your data is persisted, all right? And then you can see volumes here, you can see a lot of it, all right, stuff here. So this is basically the structure of your Docker Compose file. But of course, it has other things that you can also add uh, to this, okay? So I believe with a little explanation I've given us, you understand already, you know, what Docker Compose is and the benefits of Docker Compose. So let's go right into our application and let's create a Docker Compose file for this Node.js application, okay? So now we're not going to be running this Node.js application using Docker run. We're basically going to run it using what? A Docker Compose file. So let's get into that. So this is my folder. So I'm basically going to use one of the standard names. So I'm going to call this compose.yml. Okay. So I'm going to call it compose.yml. And if you look at my, um, you know, Visual Studio code, it gave me an icon. So basically telling me that, oh, this is a Docker compose file. And if you look at what you have, it says this compose specification establishes a standard, you know, and all of that. So with that icon, it tells you basically that, okay, your Visual Studio code recognizes that this is what a Docker compose file. And that's why you can see that icon uh, that you can see. So you can either call it compose.yaml or docker I think compose. I mean, those are the standard names. But like I said, it does not mean that you cannot use other names. Okay. It's just that these are standard names that your docker compose command can read or detect automatically without you explicitly specifying the YAML file that you want to run. All right. Uh, as docker compose. Is that okay? So we start with the services. So you can see here that I have these auto completions. So I'm going to leverage that as well. So the first service I want to run is actually my Node.js application. Now my Node.js application does not have an image yet because I deleted all the images. So now if I do Docker images, all right, I don't have an image. So what I want to also do is that because one of the beauty of Docker Compose also, in addition to helping you to run multiple containers, you can also use Docker Compose to build, all right, a Docker file. 
All right, you can also use to build an image from a Docker file. So inside of this same directory, I have a Docker file. So all I need to do is to basically tell Docker Compose to build, all right, that, you know, an image from me, for me from that particular file. So that's what I'll do. So the logical name I'm going to give my Node.js application, let me just call this NumGen, I mean, as the logical name, right? And then here I will say build, all right? So build, so I'm building. So the context part, and then you can specify the Docker file, but I'm not going to, all right, go into all of this. So I'm going to remove all of these options to not make things complicated. And I'm basically just going to specify dots. Dot here, like we've learned from Docker, basically means that my Docker file is in the current working directory. Is that okay? Now here, I'm going to specify, all right, the name of the image that I want to run. And of course, you can also specify image name like this okay and then give the image a name or maybe call it a node all right num gen okay v1 i mean you can specify like this but of course it's giving us an error and that is because we're not using the context all right keyword so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the name outside all right so it's going to come here so the image i want to run is going to be num all right node i think num gen colon version one all right, that's the name of the image. So the reason I'm providing this image name is this. Now, by the time you run your Docker Compose command, it is going to attempt to pull an image by the name node IV num gen version one. But then it's going to realize that, I mean, there's no image by that name on Docker Hall. Okay, so the purpose of putting an image name like this is that by the time Docker Compose builds, an image for me from the, the from that file. I want Docker Compose to name that image node I think NumGen version one. So that's I'm specifying the image like this. Okay. Now also I don't want my uh, I don't want my uh, container all right to start off with an arbitrary name. So I'm, I'm specifying what a container name. Okay. Now in Docker when you want to do docker run you specify the container name using iphone iphone name right and then you put the name of the container so in docker compose in order to create you know in order to specify a container name you basically use container underscore name and then you give it a name so i'm going to call my container numgen is that okay now what other thing do we need to do all right for the application so uh we need to specify the ports as well so it's going to be ports and my port is 3000 column 3000 okay so that's the port now, what other thing do we need to specify? So if you look at this file already, we are building, all right, uh, the node application with Docker Compose. We'll specify the, the name of the image after the build. So it's going to take on that image, that name. The container name will specify that the port we have, we have also specified that. Now, another thing that I want us to also add is the fact that this application actually depends on the MongoDB. Okay, so we need to specify that parameter as well. So I'm going to come here and say depends, all right, on. So depends on what? It depends on Mongo. Now, we have not created a database just yet, but of course, you can put it like this. So basically, what I'm saying is that this node application is not going to start until my database has started. Do you understand that? So that is what the depends keywords actually helps us to achieve, which means Docker Compose, when Docker Compose is starting all the services as a container, all right, the node, the Mongo database will have to start first before my node application would start. Okay, because my node application has to connect to a database. Okay, so I need to specify that. Is that okay? All right, so that's what it depends on is doing for us there. Now, the next thing we want to do is to create another service for the Mongo database. So it's going to be Mongo. All right, colon, and then the image is Mongo. All right, and what other thing do we need to put here? The image is Mongo, the container name, sorry, container name is also going to be Mongo. Okay, now I want to create a volume. So the volume is going to be, so let's just call this Mongo colon slash data. All right, slash db. I mean, that's the path. In the Docker run command, we saw this already, right? When we started this with Docker run. And if you're not sure, you can also go to the documentation, all right? And then scroll down and basically understand, you know, the parameters. So if you scroll down right here, all right, you can also see the data store. And you can see that the, the MongoDB actually stores this data inside of the data slash db. 
Is that okay? So that's exactly what we're doing. And in the documentation also, you have um, a Docker Compose example that you can also use. I mean, restart always. We can also do that as well. Okay. So here we can also put the restart always thing as well. So I can come here and say restart. And I want it to restart always. Now, there are different options when it comes to restart. But restart always, basically what that keyword will do for you is if this Mongo container should stop anytime, right? The restart always keyword will say that, I mean, it, the container should restart by itself, which actually can be useful in the production environment. Okay, that when your container stops by themselves, all right, it can also restart automatically. Now, that is one of the things that Kubernetes helps us to do, okay, when you're using Kubernetes, because with Kubernetes, when a container stops or dies or whatever, Kubernetes is intelligent enough to restart, all right, another container with the same image. So in Docker, all right, particularly with Docker Compose, you can also specify the restart keyword and say always. I mean, there are other options, right? There are other options. I mean, there is on failure, there is, um, you know, on, you know, only, I mean, different options, right? But the always keyword is one of the ones that is commonly used, which basically means if this container should stop anytime, it should be restarted automatically with the same image and with the same configuration specified right here. Is that okay? So the image is Mongo, the container name is Mongo, the volume mapping, we've done that already. All right. And the next one we want to do is for the Mongo, all right, Express. Okay. Which is the GUI for MongoDB. So here I'm going to say the image is Mongo, I think, Express. And of course, if you go to the documentation as well, you can also, all right, see that. So that is Mongo, um, I think, Express. Is that okay? All right, so Mongo iPhone Express, what other thing that we need to put here? Container name. All right, so let's call it Mongo Express. Um, we don't need volume for this, but we need the depends on, and we need ports for this one. So the port is going to be, so let's just say 8081. All right, column 8081. So the container port is 8081. All right, the host port is also 8081. Is that okay? Now, another thing we need for these also is the depends on. So we can say this guy depends on, all right? So we can say, I mean, just like what we did here. So it depends on. So we can say it depends on the Mongo database, right? So we can say Mongo. So this depends on Mongo, which means the Mongo Express would, you know, would only start after the Mongo database has started, all right? Because the Mongo Express will also have to connect to the database. So we get saying depends on, which means this service must start before you, all right, are able to start. Okay. So image container name ports depends on, I mean, those are the things that we need. And I mean, in no time we've created a Docker compose file, a basic, all right, Docker compose file, because this is not just the only Docker compose file we're going to be looking at. We're also going to be looking at an in Docker compose file as regards, you know, passing secrets environment variable and things like that okay we're going to be looking at that also because i mean this database does not have a password which means anybody can authenticate into this database okay but of course there are databases where you have to create a password and things like that and we're going to take a look at that also and now you can use the secrets all right in docker to basically pass in secrets to your containers and things like that. but of course let's start with basics and then we'll move on to all right advanced use cases is that okay so we have three containers that were specified so there's the numgen there's the mongo and there's also the mongo express is that okay so everything is set now one more thing that we also need to do is that we need to specify the environment variable because the mongo database all right you know is is right here but of course, the Mongo Express needs information about the database because the depends on that we put here, it basically just says you cannot start until this particular service has started. Okay. But the Mongo Express still needs to have an understanding of the database. All right. To connect to. All right. Because for our own application, the database configuration has actually been built inside of the application. All right. Because if we look at the application right here, we can see that it has been built already inside of the application. Okay. But for the Mongo Express, we need to tell Mongo Express, this is the database that you are connecting to. We need to specify that. And that is where, all right, another keyword comes in, which is the environment, all right, that you have here. So the environment is basically, if you come here, all right, the environment basically is the Mongo config, all right, server. So I'm going to grab that, all right, copy that. And then the name is going to be this. And the value is going to be the name of the, all right, Mongo 
All right, seven. So the name is this particular name. So this logical name is what we are referencing. All right, so Mongo. So basically, we're telling Docker Compose that by the time you start this Mongo Express, this Mongo Express is going to be connecting to this database. Is that okay? So we have our Docker file, all right, uh, sorry, our Docker Compose file, all right, you know, uh, created already. So we are building this node application with this Docker, all right, Compose file. So let's see how to run this, okay? Now here, already you have Docker installed already. So I want to assume that, that you watched the video, you already have Docker installed, whether on your Windows machine or on AWS, on your EC2 instance, right? So here, you're gonna say Docker Compose, now, if my Docker Compose file is not named compose.yml, then I have to say I think F and then the name of the file. But because I'm using a standard name that is known to Docker Compose, I don't need to specify I think F. All I need to do is just to say Docker Compose up. That's all I need to say. But if I do Docker Compose up like this, it's going to populate my terminal with, you know, different logs, of the Mongo database and I mean of different things which I really uh, do not want. Okay, and then here your iPhone D will also come into the picture. With Docker run, we already saw the iPhone D, which basically means run in a detached mode, which means don't populate our screen, just run in the background and then just give us the container ID and you know just information that are okay, but don't take over the terminal. All right, that's exactly what we want to do here. So Docker Compose Hub, I think D, will start up, all right, all the containers or the services that are specified inside of the Compose file. And it's also going to build, all right, our application for us. So let's take a look and see what we're going to have. So I'm going to press Enter. All right, so we have an error here. It says Service Mongo refers to undefined volume. All right, Mongo. Okay, that's a good one there. So how do we solve this? Because... Here, if you look at under the Mongo, we, we specified a volume, okay? But we didn't actually define that volume, okay? We, we didn't define it. So how do we define the volume? Because this volume, which we, we are mapping the volume, all right, to the Mongo, um, you know, container, but we didn't explicitly define that volume, okay? So here, I'm going to come here, and I'm going to go outside like this, and I'm going to say volumes, all right? And the name of the volume is Mongo, okay? And then pull up. All right, that's the name of the volume. So that's the volume that I mapped here. Because in Docker Compose, all right, you need to specify like, so when you have services, all right, and you also have volumes, and you can also have networks, all right, and secrets. So all those things are defined, you know, separately. All right, so if you're referencing any volume here, you must create the volume outside like this explicitly. Okay, so that's the error that we saw here. So let's run the command again, and let's see what we have this time around. So enter. All right, so there you go. The Docker Compose is doing its thing. Now, if you look at what you have, it says non-gen one. It says pool access denied for node non-gen repository does not exist. All right, because I mean, that is because of the name that we specified here, right? And there's no image by that name. So it's basically just going to tell us, all right, there's no repository by that name. But at the end of the day, because we specified the build command here, it's going to now build, all right, that, you know, an image from that Docker file and, all right, give it this particular name that was specified right here. So that's what it's going to do. I did it, and, and as you can see from here, you can see it's already building. Can you see that? So it builds, all right, that image, and then it started, all right, all of that. Now look at what it did, which means this container was the first thing that was started because we said depends on, right? So it started the Mongo container first, okay? And then the NumGen container, and of course, the Mongo Express container. And if you look at what you have, it also created a default network. And that default network is what all the containers will be connected all right to. And then, of course, it created a volume for us based on the volume that we specified right here. Okay. So now, if I do Docker, volume ls, all right, I can see the volume created right here. And if I do Docker ps or Docker compose ps, all right, I can see all the three. Uh, containers, right? And if you look at the image here, it says node I think non-gen version one. So the name that I give it here was actually the name that it's used to build that image. Do you understand that now? Okay, so that means if I do Docker images, all right, I should see an image with what? With node, all right, I think non-gen version one and all of that. Okay, and then I can see that my three containers have started. All right, and I mean, they started together at the same time. Now, if I come here to my Docker desktop, I can see that I have 
all right, three containers running. I mean, if I, I mean, you can see that right here. And it says running, all right, is three containers. So if I expand it, I can see the Mongo, the NumGen, and of course the Mongo, all right, Express. So if I click on the Mongo Express, I can connect to my container. So the username is admin, the password is pass. I can see my Mongo Express right here. And if I come here to the num, uh, node application, also if I click on it, I can see my application right here. And if I put my name and I see the length I want to stand, all right, and all of that, and I say generate, you can see this combination generated and saved successfully. So that means if I go back here to the Mongo Express, if I click here, I click on combos, I can see the generated value right here. Okay, so with Docker Compose, we've been able to start a right application, not just start all the three containers at once, but we've been able to use Docker Compose to even build, all right, you know, uh, the node application image itself. So which means we didn't have to build first before we actually, you know, run that image as a container. So Docker Compose helped us to build the image, all right, from the Docker file, started it as a container as well. And we can see that everything connected uh, seamlessly. So that's the beauty of Docker Compose right there. So thank you so much. And I'll see you, all right, on the next video when we talk more, all right, about Docker Compose. Bye for now.